Hello and welcome to the Craft Beer Corner. For today's beer review, we're jumping into a couple beers that share a commonality, but they are highly, highly contrasting styles of beer. So I thought it might be a little fun to do uh, two completely different offerings that do still share some common ground aside from both being beer. Uh, both beers sourced from Tibor. Uh, we're gonna be starting with a brewer I've never had a beer from prior. This is Great Raft Brewing's Reasonably Corrupt which is a black lager that clocks in at 5.5% ABV. They are based out of Shreveport, Louisiana. Beer number two, we've had a few beers from them before. This is Copper Kettle Brewing Company's Coconut Snowed In. They're based in Denver, Colorado. This is an oatmeal stout, Imperial, 12.2% ABV, and it was bourbon barrel aged and brewed with coconut and chocolate. So big, big ABV, completely different style, barrel aged, uh, got adjuncts, flavors in there. This one is just uh, a run of the mill, a black lager, so to speak. If you're wondering what a black lager is, we will get to that. But nonetheless, they're both going to be dark, and that is the only shred of common ground aside from them both being beers that they behold. Vastly different beers, so we're going to just see how vastly different they are, even falling in the same color spectrum. So without further ado, we're going to get things started with the uh, lighter of the two. This is Great Raft Brewing's Reasonably Corrupt Black Lager that clocks in at 5.5% ABV. Okay, so jumping right in with the first beer of today's contrasting dark beer style review. We have Great Rafting Brewing's Reasonably Corrupt. This is a black lager, clocks in at 5.5% ABV. They are based out of Shreveport, Louisiana. This is the first beer I've ever had from this brewer. Uh, Y'all know me, I absolutely love trying beers from new brewers I've never had. Always love trying new beers, even if it's from the same brewer, but we've got uh, completely new. Never had anything from them, and uh, it's always exciting time. Now, in terms of label art, it's kind of interesting. Um, it's got, uh, I don't know, some old-timey looking mustachioed dude with a snake on his head. I'm not exactly sure what to make of that, but it's uh, reasonably interesting to look at. Nonetheless, we're going to get this cracked. Gently is the name of the game. All right. Beautiful. And we're going to use the old pub glass today. This works great for loggers. All right. You can see as I'm pouring this that this is very, very dark. This would uh, indeed be classified as black, and yes, it is a lager. Um, so we'll, we'll get into that if you're unfamiliar with this style, okay? It's a reasonably recent uh, beer style in terms of popularity popping up in the last few years. Okay, so first things first, holding this up to the light, it is very, very dark indeed. This is as dark as a stout. Um, for sure. I mean, almost getting near the level of as dark as an imperial stout. Very, very dark black. You cannot see light through this at all. Um, it did form a nice uh, little head there, which is pretty typical of most lagers. Um, you get it, you know, with stouts typically off a bar if you're lucky at home, but it looks nice. It, uh, you know, kind of, wow, that looks so dark. Maybe it's, uh, you know, a black ale or, or black beer, Schwarz beer. Um, it's not. It's its own animal. It's its own entity. So effectively what this is, it's all of the same processes and, and the same yeast. So it's going to use lager yeast. It's going to use, um, you know, lagering techniques. It's just changing the malt from the classic lighter roasted malt to a much darker roasted malt. So it's still going to be using lager, lager yeast that's going to bottom ferment. It's going to be lagered, you know, to help it age and produce and get rid of all the funky flavors during the lagering process. But that is what comes out. So they just use a much darker roast. Now, I've had many, many uh, black lagers. I'm a big fan. I'm glad that uh, they started creeping up and you can get them now. It's everything that you love about a lager but with added depth just due to the roastiness of the malt bill. So you get these added flavor layers that you don't get, say, in a standard lighter um, uh, traditional colored lager because there's a lot more flavor that happens, a lot more interesting uh, notes and, and just kind of layering that goes through when you get these more deeply richly roasted malts. So this looks great. 
Let's uh, give it a sniff here. Oh, that smells so nice. Yeah, uh, in fact, just smelling this, a lot of this beer's nose reminds me of a few different styles. It does share aromatic elements with Schwarz beer, black beer, and it does share aromatic elements with porters and with stouts. It's not exactly smelling like any one of those independently, but it shares common elements. You can definitely smell these richly, deeply roasted malts in there. It's got this chocolatey, caramelly aroma to it, but it is indeed a lager. So without further ado, let's jump in and see what this one's about. Mm. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, yeah, that is great. Wow. That's a really, really nice beer. That is absolutely packed with flavor. Um, Schwarz beers tend to be very mild. This is not mild. This is almost on the same level of intensity as um, a really big, higher ABV stout or almost encroaching on Imperial Porter kind of territory. The level of roastiness that's coming through in this flavor is just intense. You're getting chocolate, you're getting caramel, and you're getting coffee. So it's sharing all these kind of undercurrents from multiple different dark beer styles, but it's a lager instead of an ale. So uh, this is kind of a unique animal. I'm a big fan. And one other thing, it still has that very light factor that most lagers have. It doesn't feel like a heavy beer, even though it's packed with flavor and it's just riddled with these rich malt roasty notes it's still very very light it and it feels refreshing it just tastes big um it's a really nice beer i'm gonna go in for another sip for body and mouthfeel start to explore how this flavor develops and finishes the body on this one is uh medium medium light somewhere in there, so pretty appropriate for 5.5% on a lager. The mouth feels quite nice. Mouth feel has a bit more resistance to it than you would expect. It doesn't feel flat. It's not super thick, it's not syrupy, but it does have some resistance. When you agitate it around the palate, it gets very, very creamy, silky creamy. Um, very, very nice mouth feel to go with this um, kind of spot on body for my money. In terms of the flavor development, it's just all of that rush of all those flavors that you could detect in the aroma, they come through perfectly clearly. And it's independently coffee, chocolate, and caramel. And even some hints of, uh, you know, kind of caramelized brown sugar and bits of molasses. It's got this real deep, rich quality to it. It's fantastic. It's so flavorful. And this is a beer style that really is a story of the malts, much like stouts and porters are. It's not really about the bittering. And uh, I could tell you, this has a much longer finish than your average lager ever thought about having. Just the intensity of the flavor of the malts, it's really extending out the length of the finish. And it doesn't finish dry. It finishes nice and wet. Um, so it's not like a dry stout or, or some drier porters. And it's not like a Pilsner where it finishes super crisp. It's just nice and wet and finishes and those flavors just linger. And they're in, really in equal parts, kind of chocolate, coffee, caramel, with undercurrents of kind of toasted brown sugar and molasses. It's just fantastic. I love the balance of this. It tastes absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna take my time, sip on this, come up with my scores. When we come back, we will get to the second beer of today's review, and that is Copper Kettle Brewing Company's Coconut Snowed In Oatmeal Stout that uh, technically is Imperial. It's 12.2% ABV, and that one has been brewed with coconut and chocolate and then bourbon barrel aged. Okay, now jumping right into the second beer of today's contrasting dark beer styles uh, review, we've got Copper Kettle Brewing Company's Coconut Snowed In. This is an Imperial Oatmeal Stout that's been bourbon barrel aged and also brewed with coconut and chocolate. Clocks in at 12.2% ABV. They are based out of Denver, Colorado. Now, uh, this is keeping very much with the theme of all the other label designs I've seen on their beers. They have very clean label design. Um, sometimes they'll throw just a mild little kind of nod to what the beer they're doing. So in here you can see a Snowden truck 
flanked by a couple of flamingos, of course. Um, I think of flamingos uh, coming from Florida when I think of the snow, obviously, like you do. Uh, but nonetheless, that's about the extent of the label art. So let's just get this bad boy cracked. This sounds awesome. I can't wait. All right. Get this poured right in the glass. Oh, that is dark. Not super thick, but it's got a little uh, resistance as it's pouring out of here. I'm going to give it a chance to form a head. Oatmeal should form and retain better than your average stout poured at home. We talk about this all the time. Oatmeal is the number one best ingredient, oats, that you can use to help in head creation and retention. Though this does appear to be relatively active in terms of effervescence, I can see it going, so I don't know how, how long this is going to hold. I can tell you before I even uh, look at this at the light, it is pungent. I can smell this from, I'm a good foot, foot and a half away, and it smells intense. Uh, color, that's a absolute classic textbook imperial stout. It is pitch black. No light through it at all. Though the camera won't pick this up, I can see the carbonation moving up the sides of the glass. So it is quite active. And indeed, yeah, that head already broke down a little bit, but it's gonna probably keep a little pad on top and nice cling on the sides, but looks great. Let's get a deeper sniff. Oh, wow. Oh, that smells fantastic. You get a little sweetness, you get a little booziness. You can hands down smell that bourbon and the chocolate and the coconut come through pretty clearly as well. And it has kind of this underlying uh, caramel nature to this malt bill. So it's almost putting me in mind of like bourbon soaked uh, Samoa cookies, Girl Scout Samoa cookies. It smells fantastic. So uh, let's just jump right in, see what this is about. Mm. Mm. Oh, oh, that's delicious. That's a big beer. Wow. Oh, wow. So my descriptor of bourbon soaked Samoa cookies, that really is not far off the mark at all. That tastes so bloody good. I wish you could have a sip of what I just tasted. That is absolutely incredible beer. That is absolutely incredible beer. This could be one of the beers that is nailed the best in my money out of the hundreds of different beers I've had over the years that have coconut as an adjunct ingredient that has done it the best. Coconut is actually a rather challenging ingredient with which to brew. It depends on the type of coconut you use, the volume and when and how long at what temperature you add it during the beer producing process. Some coconut often will produce this off flavor. It's hard to describe what it tastes like, but you know it when you taste it. This tastes like fresh coconut, like fresh raw coconut that you would have added into a dessert or a cookie. Like I said, a Samoa, it really does put me in mind of that. And indeed, this malt bill is bringing up elements of that kind of shortbread cookie side. So it really is, I mean, that's immediately where my brain's going. Bourbon soaked Samoa cookies, and it just tastes bloody fantastic. It is bloody fantastic. I'm going to jump in for body and mouthfeel, explore these flavors a bit more. Body, I'd say, is on the high end of medium. It's not as robust as you would expect for the ABV range at 12.2, but the mouthfeel, there's a ton of resistance. It does almost on the border of feeling syrup-like. It's definitely got natural thickness to it, and it's a really nice feeling mouthfeel for a good big beer at this ABV range of this style, especially considering the body isn't that huge for the style in the ABV. It feels nice, it, you know, it's heavy enough, but it's not what I expected for this style in this ABV range. But this, I, I cannot begin to express to you how good this tastes. It, it just tastes absolutely amazing. It is absolutely amazing. I am loving this beer. I'm gonna jump in, explore this flavor a bit more, but before I do, I can tell you the balance that I'm getting out of this. As we all know, I'll say this over and over, different beer styles are all about different things. Stouts are a story of the malt bill. The malt bill, especially in tandem with whatever barrels they chose and the length of time and the adjunct ingredients 
they absolutely got it on the money. It's exactly right. The balance on this is just spot on. It is spot on. Everything comes through in full force. Nothing's vying for attention. It's all playing an equal partnership to make this beer what it is. And uh, it's just bloody delicious. I'm gonna jump in again to explore these flavors again. Sweetness, first thing you get up front. Then the bourbon comes through and those two increase in intensity for the first two, three seconds. Then this caramel-like quality comes through out of the malt bill and it mixes with the chocolate that they added and the chocolate qualities from the malt bill and the coconut. And it all comes through cleanly. And then they're all just kind of holding in equal parts there to just make this delicious, delicious dessert-like oatmeal stout. It is absolutely phenomenal. I am in love with this beer. I really am. If you can't tell, I'm properly excited to be drinking this. It is truly, truly delicious. In terms of length of finish, stouts aren't really known for having super long finishes. This one is certainly above average. It's not as long on the end of each sip as some, uh, notably like Hubbard's Cave flavored Imperials. Those tend to last a very long time. They don't all, but the majority of them do. This is above average, but it's not quite to that level, but it's very, very nice. Nice, big, full-bodied, wet finish to the end, and it all just kind of, it's a very even drop to the end when the flavor finally dissipates. Just a little lingering coconut in the back, kind of caramel. So it's coconut and these caramel flavors with a little bourbon back. That's where it finishes off. It is positively lovely. I'm gonna take my time, sip on this, come up with my scores. When we come back, we will get both beers ranked from top to bottom. Okay, now that we've gotten to enjoy both of these beers, we're gonna get them ranked. Starting with the Great Raft Brewing's Reasonably Corrupt. This is the Black Lager, clocked in at 5.5% ABV, based out of Shreveport, Louisiana. Starting with the aroma, the aroma on this beer was very nice. It was quite a lot readily apparent, uh, more pronounced than your standard lager. You could really smell the roasted malts that were in this and it was uh, relatively pronounced. Um, certainly above average, it gets an eight out of 10. For the taste, I absolutely loved it. This had all of the classic clean, smooth crispness of your typical lager but in black form, so it had added layers of richness and depth to it. There was chocolate, there was caramel, there was earthiness. It was just kind of a, a lager elevated. If you haven't had black lagers before, not that many, they're one of my favorite styles that's come out in the past few years, and this was a great example why. I give it a perfect 10 out of 10. For the body, this was textbook lager, um, frankly, it was a little bit more robust than your average lager would be, uh, just because there was a bit more depth from the extra malts that went in there since it was roasted. It does add extra malts in there because there's fewer fermentables. So to get the ABV up to the range they want, they have to use a higher volume that adds more body. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10. For the mouthfeel, this was textbook lager, black or otherwise, it gets a perfect 10 out of 10. For the finish, this beer had an exceptionally long finish for a lager. You don't get finishes like that on your average lager, even on your average lighter colored ale, blonde ales, anything of that nature. But this beer had real staying power. Those rich, deep roasted malts lasted and lasted and lasted and just dragged out the end of the finish. It was phenomenal. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10. For the head and retention, this beer did well. It uh, did do well. It didn't form a head, say, like uh, Pilsner would do, big, thick, lush, foamy, but it did form a nice head and it uh, held its own for a reasonable amount of time. It's above average, it gets a seven out of 10. For the appearance, this was textbook black lager, if anything, a bit darker than I anticipated. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10. For the balance, I loved it. The balance on this beer, I think they nailed. Had all the classic hallmarks of a lager, but all the added depth of your typical darker ale style beers, I give it a perfect 10 out of 10. Feeling the intangible. I really only docked a few points in a few categories. Frankly, I loved it. I thought this was fantastic. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10 from me. Finally, as an example of this style, 
It did lose a couple points in aroma and a few in the head and retention, but frankly, this beer was just so well done and such a great example of what a black clogger can be. Uh, I gave it top marks. It gets a 10 out of 10, which brings the total score on Great Raft Brewing's Reasonably Corrupt to a 95 out of 100. This is absolutely top tier black lager, well worth getting your hands on if you can find it. I do highly recommend this one. Moving on to beer number two, Copper Kettle Brewing Company's Coconut Snowed In. This is an imperial oatmeal stout uh, that's been brewed with coconut and chocolate and then bourbon barrel aged, clocked in at 12.2% ABV, and they are based out of Denver, Colorado. Starting with the aroma, the aroma on this beer was positively massive. You could smell it from a couple feet away. The closer you got, the more intense it got. Just rich malt bill, coconut, chocolate, and that bourbon. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10. For the taste, exactly what I expected in the taste based on the aroma came through. It was all in there, everything and then some. It had this nice sweetness, had this caramel nature to it, nice chocolatey undertone, wonderful balance of the ingredients. The bourbon came through clearly. I loved it. It gets a 10 out of 10. For the body. The body on this beer surprised me. Um, it was average and 12.2 for an oatmeal stout with added ingredients. I really expected a nice robust body and it just didn't have it. It was high end of average, but nowhere near what I anticipated for the style and ABV range. It gets a six out of 10 for the mouthfeel. The mouthfeel on the other hand was textbook. It was thick, 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 very thick mouthfeel. Classic oatmeal stout adds a lot more depth, a lot more layer to it. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10 for the finish. Okay, so stouts are uh, typically known for having the longest finish of a beer style. But that said, this had a bunch of additive ingredients. It was bourbon barrel aged and it was an imperial. It just didn't have the staying power I anticipated. The flavors were nice and they all came through, but it just ended far sooner than I was hoping or liking or anticipating for the ABV range. It just gets high end of average, six out of 10. For the head and retention, this was another category that surprised me. This is a big, heavy, bold, uh, high ABV oatmeal stout, and it didn't form that great of a head. Now, I'm sure it would if this were on a tap at a bar, but Porto Homa didn't do that great. Just high end of average, it gets a six out of 10. For the appearance, this was textbook imperial stout, pitch black, 10 out of 10. For the balance, the balance on this beer was absolutely phenomenal. I truly believed um, that they nailed letting every ingredient speak that they went with in this beer bill. All of the deep multifaceted layers that came from the malt selection came through perfectly clearly. The coconut as well, the chocolate as well, and the coconut was phenomenal. It can be funky in some beers. It was perfect in this beer. The bourbon came through, it was all in there. Total package for me in perfect harmony. Gets a 10 out of 10. Feeling in the intangible. I loved it. I thought this beer was bloody ridiculously delicious and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed every drop of it. It was very well crafted. The balance was exceptional. All the flavors came through. It gets a 10 out of 10. Finally is an example of the style. This beer did lose some pretty hefty points in a few categories, but I felt like I would be doing this beer a disservice for knocking it points based on elements that really aren't that critical to the flavor which is really the most important thing. All categories are important when we're ranking on a style, but this beer just tasted so good. I had to give it uh, essentially the, the full points that I could. I only docked one here just because I did dock so many points in multiple categories, but it got as full as I could possibly give it because it tasted that good. It gets a nine out of 10. That brings the total score on Copper Kettle Brewing's Coconut Snowed In to an 87 out of 100. So we're looking at a point spread of eight points, a 95 and an 87, but both of these are well above average offerings, well worth seeking. If you're a fan of black lagers, this one was exceptional. If you're a fan of oatmeal imperial stouts, especially with the flavors and the aging they did on this one, this was absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend both beers. Folks, that's today's review. As always, I do sincerely appreciate you tuning in today. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to stay in the loop when our videos go live to YouTube, you can just click the notification bell icon. It's right next to the subscribe button. Until next time, keep it beer, keep it craft. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.